Hey everybody and welcome back to Wacom Texas. The show where you dream path apart and we weave you some art. Uh, you might see what I'm holding here is a pair of swants. We just got these hot off a of loom yesterday. So swants are something that we made, first we made a sweater and then we turned them into pants and then we called them swants. So we loom, uh, on the loom we put together a sweater. Then we cut apart the sweater and then put together some pants with the, that sweater. Available for sale on our website, wonderdom.com. Also, we're gonna show you how to easily make swants um, if you don't have the money to actually buy them from us. <clears throat> okay, today we're gonna show you how to use a loom. A loom is a really basic machine that was created in the 1600s, right? Uh, 1607. Mid mid it's medieval. Mid medieval. Um, there's only one kind of loom. You can't deviate on what a loom is because it does one thing. Well, there's two kinds. We got one back here that's a little smaller. Well, it's a smaller version of the same thing. Okay. But essentially, every culture in the world has used this loom. Once it was created, they all bought one and they all made their stuff. Mayans. Native Americans. Native Americans. Eskimos. Shakers. Amish. Mennonites. Um, Mormons. Polish. Polish. The French. French Revolution. Um, medieval times. Some people say that the printing press is what changed, you know, the world. But I would... Not to go dark, even the Nazis. The Nazis were well known for a lot of their uh, outfits and uniforms and tapestries as well. Not, not that that was a good thing, but um, they all use the same loom. That's the point. And by having shared knowledge and shared training sessions around the world, we, we, we tapestries really took off. Yeah. China, Japan. All right, let's get started. We'll show you how to use it. Okay, so women around the world um, have a desire to make tapestries and rugs and swants. And so this machine allows them to do it quickly and easily. You can easily make, um, this is a 16 foot rug that was made in one day. So not hard at all. Not too hard. Because it's all mechanical. So due to uh, the mechanical process of weaving, you can easily make this. Now you might've heard of the term loomy bin because this thing's so difficult it sends people to a place where they need to get some. Oh, it's a loony bin. Or like loons. Oh, like. Okay. Um, um, it's good though. Okay, so what you have over here is a uh, Bakken's nylon, so you and go. yeah, so Jay is showing you how to thread that. So what you have is something called a warp. A warp is like wood grain, so the length of the wood grain um, would be like a rip cut. That's the warp in weaving, very similar. So here, what he's doing is he's determining how long the warp is going to be for the swants that we're making. So each warp could be 20 foot long if you're trying to get 16 feet of swants off the assembly line so it's a due lot to of shrinkage. Math. A lot of math. Yeah, you do have some shrinkage and some waste. And then you just put your you put your fingers in here, like put claws, your fingers and, in there, and you pull it out. And you pull it out. Now we're gonna finish setting this up, so I'm not gonna go ahead and pull it all the way off. You're not gonna pull but it you off. You kind of get what I'm doing. Okay. Once you would pull that off, you're gonna bring it over here to, to the, the back reed, side. To the back side. And we got a, a tool here somewhere where yeah. you slay it, you just jab it. Well, no, you tie off. You tie off to these straps. You tie off to these, I think they're called runyons. So you tie, it looks like a troll head, the hair because it's been cut off. Um, you tie off to here and then, yeah, so what are you saying? You are slay it. Slaying the reed. You just so jab you, it in here and back and forth. Yeah, you slay through the reed and then you bring this, I think you bring this through, right? You see yeah. yeah, and then it comes all the way through into the pokes into these little pokers. Yep. And then on the um, Motley Crew over here, you tie off again on the other side to this, and then this controls your tension. And so it's kind of like the um, what's that medieval torture device? The yeah, it's like a wheel mm -hmm. which just cranks one at a time. Catherine's wheel. So it's like Catherine's wheel. You keep cranking the tension until it's tight. So it's super tight. Okay, then I don't know if you can see this. This is kind of like when you're playing foosball and you're keeping score. Um, you have a certain pattern. So there's going to be repetition, but the repetition goes like this quadrant to this quadrant, repeats over and over and over. And I'll give you just a sample of a warp set reads uh, substitution chart pattern. Just yeah. For instance, it'd be like zero, zero, one, uh -huh. and then zero, one, and zero, one, one, uh -huh. and zero, one 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 right that's the coolest one and then it goes to one and right. then it goes to one 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 two right i mean it can i could keep going oh, they, get it. I, they get it okay 
So it's repetition. Um, it's not that hard. Um, it's all about math and science and um, the me mechanical age of reproduction. Um, and then when you're ready, you pull this out and then you step on a foot pedal that corresponds with the number here. So number three, I pull up. Can you give me the shuttlecock? Um, give me the shuttlecock. Okay, yeah. Uh, the boat shuttlecock? Yep. Yep, okay, so this is called a boat shuttlecock. Now what we're gonna do, we've talked about the um, warp. Now we're gonna talk about the weft. So you run your shuttlecock through the warp to get your weft, right? Yep. And then slide it back the other way. Wait, wait, hold on. I have to do a different combination. So I'm doing six now. Raise that up and he slides it back to me. And then I'm gonna go with four and slide it back to him. Just like that. So it's actually fairly simple. Um, Loom's, Loom's get a bad rep because it looks like a complicated machine, but actually, like I said, you might have some problems if your tension gets off um, and some shrinkage. But, but you can make this in a day. You can make this in a day. You sell this for what? 25 bucks? 25 bucks. 18 foot? You can make a lot of money. $25 a day is not too bad. Consider right. it at home with a cat. Right. Throw this on your Etsy uh -huh. shop and you're going to make a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, one other thing we learned is if you use yarn or other fat um, twine, if you use yarn or other fat twine, it'll go a lot faster. The finer the thread, the slower it's going to take to make your swing. So if they were to make this with fatter yarn, half a day. Right, 25 bucks, half a day. Now yeah, you're looking you at $50 like a day. You can use rope if you want. Yeah, you're looking at $100 a day, maybe if you can get four. <clears throat> if you get four of these done, you're going to make $200 in one day. Yeah. So, so now you're talking about real money. Now you're talking about real money and growing your stacks longer, which is what it's all about. I think that's it, right? Yeah. That, this All is right. this uh, particular loom is a new comb loom company, uh, yep. Davenport, Iowa. This dates this particular machine dates back probably I don't right. know, like twenty years. All right, email us with your questions. Um, hit us up on our website to buy Swance. Um, and we look forward to you watching more of these tutorial videos. Pretty easy, right?